Hi everyone, in this video we'll carry forward from the previous one where we discussed max and min from a high column and a low column to get the range of a stock that it has traded between uh, in an X period of days, that is in the last 50 period of days, what is the highest price it traded at and what is the lowest price it traded at, right? Now we move to a question that is very common and it actually took me a lot of time to understand how to get this particular information out of the Google Finance function. Many a times we are focused on how to get a price for a particular date. Example, in India we follow April to March financial years. If you want to calculate a financial year return as of now, like that is the first trading price in April 2023, the first trading day of April 2023, and the price today, you have to know the price it closed on 3rd April 2023, right? How to get price for that single day without running the query function and find function and, you know, all the shenanigans with the Google Finance formula. There is a particular way and I'll discuss that in this, in this video itself. So the formula is you just use Google Finance, you put uh, the date minus one and the date as a range. So you put one day before and the date you want the price at and, and you ask it at a, at a daily time frame. So here E533 is basically 3rd April 2023, right? And you can use a date function to input the date. Now, when we use this function, the ticker is D534, which is ITC. We want the price from 2nd April 2023 to 3rd April 2023, right? And since 2nd April was like a holiday, the price is not available. It will give price for 3rd April. But it also works when 2nd April is a trading day, right? It only gives the price for the last closing information that you provide. So it's actually the function working is from it's greater than this date and it's less than equal to uh, it's, and it's less than equal to this date 533 so the price you will get will be greater than 2nd april and it will be less than equal to 3rd april right so now let's see this in action google finance we want the closing price and in the last video we discussed if you want the closing price you just have to mention price the date is whatever i've mentioned minus 1 till whatever i've mentioned and if you notice, we are wrapping it around an index function and we are mentioning second row, second column. Now, how does this help you? For that, we need to look at rows 529 and 530. If you look at when we use this function of Google Finance, we get a grid of data where we have date, close. The price information is only in this particular cell, cell D530. And in these four cells, we can label them as first row, first column. First row, second column, second row, first column, second row, second column. So we can assign them coordinates kind of, right? And this is what I'm doing with the index function. I'm using the index function outside the Google Finance function and telling it in this Google Finance function, whatever the output is, give me second row, second column information in this particular cell. So in second row, second column, the price is 378.9 and 378.9 is the price on 3rd April 2023 and as we discussed in the very first video in the series how to get the current market price to get the current market price we just need to get google finance the ticker and the price it will give us the latest price stored in the data set and to calculate the returns it's very simple you just divide the current market price with the older price and you do a minus one this is this will be the holding period return and we have a 6.8 percent return in this financial year for ITC and for SBI, it's a 44% return or like 43.8% return to be exact, right? And this is how you get a, a price for one particular date and then calculate returns with any other date possible. In rows 533 to 535, I showed you the return calculation with current market price. But what if you just wanted to calculate the return in the first quarter of 2023, that is April to June, right? So you can just, you know, use this same formula and we can do this calculation in the second one. We'll change to E539. Right, E539. Ticker will become D540. And yeah, so we'll have 
the same price information because it's the same date, 3rd April 2023, and then last day of June, right? So this, to make sure I can transpose it, I'll remove the column dollar, right? And I'll copy and I'll paste. Now you see, if I press F2 on it, I can see the price on 30th June for ITC and the range is exactly the same way, minus one and minus. So 451.6 is the price on 30th June 2023. And again, calculating the returns. So in the first quarter of 2023, ITC actually outperformed. It gave 19.2% return. And since then, it, is, it has been on a downward trajectory, right? So this is how you can actually see quarter on quarter returns or FY uh, till date returns, like the financial year till date returns, or you know, you can see nine month returns, six month returns, absolutely whatever you want. So this is how you first get price at a particular date. Then you can get multiple price at multiple dates and then calculate the returns between those prices because now you have the information, right? I hope you learned something in this video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.